A few days ago, I was in London attending an event consisting mostly of ex-Muslims discussing ex-Muslim and atheist issues. And one of the issues that was brought to my attention was the case of Sohil Arabi. Sohil Arabi is a man like me. He's a blogger and created content criticizing Islamic governance and just Islam as a religion in general. But the difference between us is that whilst I live in the UK in relative safety, Sohil Arabi lives in the Islamic Republic of Iran. Now, if you know the slightest thing about that backward joke of a regime, you won't be at all surprised to learn that in 2013, he was sentenced to be executed by the government of Iran for insulting the country and the prophet of the religion that it's founded upon. I'll repeat this. Sahil was sentenced to death for the crime of insulting a dead man on social media. The Iranian regime forced his wife to divorce him, and he hasn't seen his child in years. The good news is this. Thanks to the efforts of human rights organizations and protesters, Sahil's sentence was reduced to mere imprisonment and the compulsory study of Islam. The bad news is this. A man is still in prison for expressing his opinion on social media, and his punishment includes a forced study of a religious tradition. And Sahil has been beaten and tortured to the point of hospitalization by prison guards. Conditions in the prison are so bad that Sahil has repeatedly gone on hunger strike to protest not only his own mistreatment, but the mistreatment of his fellow inmates. And whilst Sahil has been doing so much for the cause of free expression and for the well-being of his fellow inmates. Most of us here in free democracies have done precisely nothing for him in return. That's a scandal and we should be ashamed of our inaction and our failure to respond to this moral emergency. Luckily, this isn't true of everyone. The day after the event in London, I joined my friend Armin Navabi, as well as fellow speakers such as Steve Woodford and Drew McCoy and the conference organizers and a number of conference attendees as well in protesting right outside of the embassy of the Islamic Republic of Iran for the release of Sahil Arabi. We were met with a police response and told that we couldn't protest directly outside of the embassy. Luckily, we know our rights and were not intimidated into retreating from the embassy door. A police officer actually attempted to get Armin's name and phone number whilst completely obscuring the fact that this isn't a legal necessity. Here's the rather amusing footage of that interaction. My, re my response was no. Okay, so I'm just going to keep asking you to move to this okay, side okay. straight. Okay, and I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing. Well, then we're not working together in that way. No, we're not. But why is that? Why aren't because you cooperating? Because it's not illegal. Because we're, it's not illegal. We, our limit is the law. Right, okay. But like our I limit say, is the law. Yeah, I appreciate that. But like I say, it would facilitate us to work together if you could go to the other but side of the street. Is it the law that I have to give up my name? Uh, I'm you not sure. If you're just stood in public, I, can't, I, I don't think you have to give your name. If you're just... Can you tell me if it's the law that I have to answer your question? No, as long as you're not... What? Is it the law that if you answer, um, ask me a question, I have to answer I'm asking for your details so that no, no, I can... No, no, you hear my question. I'm hearing your question. My question was, is it the law that when you ask me a question, yeah. I have to answer? Well, I'm asking for your name and address. No, you don't, are, you, are you listening to my question? I am. I'm asking for your name and address. I know what you're asking. You're but not you're being cooperative. That's fine. I would just be to our control and say you're not being cooperative. Go ahead. But okay. can you answer my question? Yeah. Is it the law that when you answer, ask a question of me, I have to answer it? Well, yes. Well, yes. Yes, when I'm asking you, what, what is your purpose here? To protest for the, for the imprisonment and okay. torture of Sohel Arabi. Why can you not just give me your contact details and we can carry on with this? Because I've got loads of other things to do. Do I have to? I would prefer it, to be fair. Okay, I don't prefer it. Okay, all right. You know, actually, look, who's blocking the door? We you guys here. are working. Yeah, we work here. We're working as well. No, no, you're not working there, yeah. What? You're and this is our job. Activism oh. is our job. Oh, full time job? Yeah. Oh, okay. So you do your job, I'll be doing Thank you so much. <laughs> On the other side of the road, I spent a few minutes speaking to Armin about Sohail Arabi and his condition and our protest uh, outside of the embassy. This was filmed by Steve Woodford. The thing that strikes me is not how bad he's got it, but how good we've got it. We don't even think about the fact that we can say whatever we want and get away with it. We, like, you, you were just talking to the police and, and you were basically sticking it to them and they can't do anything. Right. Like they were saying, you know, you're not going to stand here, and you said, yes, we are, and that was the end of it. Right. Right? We live in a country where you can do that kind of thing. These people live in a country where you can't even make a Facebook post right. without getting arrested and sentenced to death. That's what, what a lot of people I, I don't realize about this that I've, been, that I've been telling about it. Yeah, he's arrested now, but he was originally sentenced to death. Right. And that only got, gets retracted when human rights organizations kick up a big fuss about it. Actually, that's a very good point, because to the people that say that these kind of things don't have any effect, 
the, the only reason why they removed the death sentence is exactly because of stuff like this. But then, he, but then now people are started ignoring him and they started torturing him. There are people, there are people in London today and, and, and this year and in the summertime who are, who are knocking down Parliament's door and saying, do something about the climate, do something about animal suffering. Right. We should be going to the embassies of these countries, knocking down their door and doing exactly the same thing. Exactly. And like you said, if this was a Muslim who was being persecuted, there'd be more people here yeah. and more of them with cameras yeah. and more of them from newspapers. Yeah, as they should. As they should, yeah. exactly. Right. Like that's a good thing that yeah. they're doing that, but they should be here as well. Yeah. And they're just, they're just simply not. Because nobody gives a f about atheists, yeah. including other atheists. This wasn't the only protest. There were many protests just like it happening all over the world and there will be more and more and more until Sahil Arabi is afforded the justice that he deserves. I hope to see you at a future protest. I hope I don't need to stress any further that this whole situation is a stain upon human rights and deserves our immediate attention. This may appear only to be one man's struggle, but Sahil Arabi's case is a symbolic one, indicative of Iran's refusal to respect the basic human rights of its citizens. That's why Steve Woodford, Rationality Rules, and I are starting a petition for the UK government to condemn Iran's treatment of Sahil Arabi and express solidarity with both him and his right to free expression. So if you live in the UK, we urge you to sign this petition. If we can surpass 10,000 digital signatures, the UK government is obligated to respond to our request. What better way to demonstrate our support for Sohail Arabi than to make our government acknowledge and denounce his arrest and conditions? If you don't live in the UK, there is another petition on the website for Atheist Republic, which aims also to just raise awareness of Sohail's condition. Both links are in the description. Please help us reach our government as a first step in the process of eventually reaching Iran's. If you've seen my videos before, then consider this. If I were to make precisely the same videos that I already do, but just so happened to live in another country, in Iran, I'd have been arrested too. It shouldn't escape us that we've won a kind of lottery by being born into a free country that allows us to protest inhumanity and should recognize that it's a moral offense not to do so. Please sign our petition, not just for the rights of Sahil Arabi, but for the rights of everyone like him. When this same Islamic Republic once condemned Salman Rushdie to death for the crime of writing a novel, forcing him to live in hiding, his friend Christopher Hitchens said the following of Salman's circumstance. Mutato nomine et date fabula narrator. Change only the name and this story is about you.